Let's now turn our attention to GRV board member and former AFL great Emmett Dunn. Hello to you, Emmett. Morning, James. Morning, gentlemen. I think you've thrown me under the bus there <laughs> with that great and legend stuff. I was an ordinary player and a good side. Well, you must have been a little bit better than ordinary, mate, because soon to be an AFL uh, life member, which must be great for the, the recognition side of things. Yes, it is. I'm very proud to receive mm. it. It's a, it's a great award and uh, footy's been great for me and uh, I've really enjoyed the whole journey, and particularly in the last, you know, 20 years after finishing playing by giving back to the game that's given so much to me. I'm just seeing a couple of these photos here on the screen and, and you've barely changed a bit. You've aged gracefully, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've still got most of my hair. I'm starting to get a bit grey, but uh, yeah, I'm lucky. I need some advice for the Mo because I've been working on mine ever since we went live on Thrill of the Chase <laughs> two years ago and it's just not working. But turning our attention to Greyhound Racing, where did it all begin for you, uh, the love for Greyhound Racing and, and then to end up being a GRV board member? Yeah, um, I'm a city boy and uh, a country cousin of ours uh, came and lived with us uh, when he went through university and he was mad keen Greyhound follower. And uh, I would join him as we went to the old Olympic Park and Sandown back in the old days. Uh, and very exciting and it seemed to be never ending action. You know, there'd be sort of 10 minutes between races. You go to the uh, gambling ring, there'd be 30 or so bookmakers around yelling and screaming and turning the dials and so forth. It was uh, it was most enjoyable back then. It's the one thing I wish I got to, Olympic Park. I was only five years of age, so I'm not sure I would have been able to bet then anyway, but <laughs> by gee, I would have loved to have got to Olympic Park. The atmosphere, they say, was extraordinary. Yes, it was all interesting characters walking around there. It was uh, all action. As I said, the, the bookies were yelling out and screaming and <laughs> giving the odds, and uh, the dogs would run around. It was, uh, it was very entertaining and, and most enjoyable, I must say. It was a different age uh, back then, wasn't it, uh, Emmett? That's for sure. Just quickly, you've been a board member since around 2016. There always seems to be some sort of initiative and new incentives coming through from Greyhound Racing Victoria. What are you most proud of in, in your time on the board? Yeah, look, it's a great team at GRV. They've, they've done a wonderful job over my time. It's been terrific in introducing changes and, and upgrading the, the status of the sport. Uh, much, most, you know, the betting down of the, of the uh, code of practice was a, a terrific effort. But I really think looking back over my time, the last 12 months, and I really appreciate, we the board, Peter, the, the chair and all the board and everyone at GRV really appreciate the, the efforts of all the participants last year in, uh, in responding to our request for the, to, to get over the COVID. And, and it's, the tale is that the sport continued throughout all of that last year, regardless of all the issues that went on, and actually grew. So thank you for all the participants for, for chipping in and complying with our request. It was really great. It really was great, the fact that we could continue racing, and not just race, as I've said so many times, but, but race so safely. We had no COVID cases throughout the whole year, and obviously we're, we're continuing to race now with this five-day lockdown, but there are so many rules in place, and GRV have had to be so nimble in the sense they've had to move about, do things differently, and, and the participants have been first to jump on and follow whatever they need to in order to race safely. They certainly have and Alan Clayton and his team have done a wonderful job mm. as well but the participants is great and we're here for the next five days so please continue on with that effort. It's necessary to do that. Now Greyhound Racing v AFL, there'd be some similarities. I know just off air a moment ago you said the analyzer was similar to how they did it in the footy. Is there is there more that uh, more that rings a bell when you, you talk Greyhound Racing uh, compared to footy? Certainly, it's a competition. And it's a sport, mm. so that's you know in the same sort of cohort. Uh, and last year's Melbourne Cup, uh, watching it on TV, yeah. Lucky uh, after winning the Melbourne Cup, the way he stride down the down the straight, you know, chest out, uh, fists, arms, punching the air and grabbing hold of anyone and everyone <laughs> he could, reminded me a great deal of like a, an AFL coach coming out of the stand, siren goes, you won the grand final, you walk onto the ground and th they're doing the same thing. And one thing here is, Lucky will always be a Melbourne Cup winning trainer. And it's just like being a, a, a VFL or an AFL premiership player. You always have that with you the rest of your life. And it, it must be a great feeling mm. for him. And it's game changing, isn't it? And that's that's the other thing. That's game changing for Lucky. He can set up his family, he owns the Greyhound. Now the Greyhound's at stud. But that's the beauty of this sport. I mean, it, it can be really life changing for so many people. Yeah. Look, I like it because it's egalitarian. Yep. You, you don't have to uh, come from a a, a, a a gifted family background. Uh, backgrounds don't matter. Money doesn't really matter. Uh, and you're right. It does change. And look, our involvement with women in particular is, is just terrific. 26% of our trainers are female and that number's growing.
Mm. And more than half of our elite trainers are women. And Kayla's story is just another one of those. It's got a great future. And there's a massive impact too, isn't there? Greyhound racing in regional areas, of course. We've got all of the country tracks as well as the, the two metro tracks. But there is a, a really big impact that Greyhound racing makes on the, the regional Victoria area. Certainly does. Mm. Um, either directly or indirectly, Greyhound racing employs 4,000 people across Victoria. Most of those jobs are in the country, regional areas, where it's tough and hard to get a job. And I went up to Horsham a couple of weeks ago to their awards night, and it was just a fantastic night. Just the earthiness of the people and their passion for the, for the sport and the collegiate approach through the people at that club was great. I really enjoyed it. And that, no doubt, goes across the state. What's the, the, the vision for the sport now going forward? We've set up a really good base now, got through COVID. Hopefully uh, we're, we're seeing the tail end of that. What are some of the things you can tell us going forward now? Yes, yeah, so there's always initiatives on, on the go. Uh, increasing prize money is important, but also we're in a competitive environment with the other states and that's what we keep our eye on. Look, there's some things happening with uh, our social licence. Uh, improving that in terms of inclusion. I can't give the cat out of the bag at this stage, but you watch this year. And it is part of our joining with the community and being an important part of the community. And yeah. that, that's where we're going to. Well, speaking about uh, that, the incentives and, and things like that, uh, GRV have always been very good with initiatives and, and trying something new, especially in, in most recent years. But the new Pink Diamond series is, is exciting. It's lucrative. Uh, there's great money and it's a great incentive for, for people to breed greyhounds in Victoria. Yeah, that's right. And we are in a competitive environment. Mm -hmm. And we also we look forward to the future. And, of course, more dogs, more races, more opportunities for, for people to trial their dogs and also uh, race them, which, which is growing the sport. Tigers, you're a, you're a former Tiger man. How do you think they're going to go this year, swinging our attention back to the AFL? Can they, can they win again? Can they dominate again? I'm not a former Tiger. <laughs> I'm still a Tiger. Don't worry about it. It's like being a premiership player. Um, yes, they certainly can. We'll be competitive. It's, every year the competition gets harder and harder and harder with the draft and the salary caps and so forth. It's, it makes the, the competition level and even. So it'll be, it'll be diff difficult again, mm. uh, the challenges we've thrown up again, um, but we'll be competitive and we'll just take it from there. They might be a little bit more than competitive this year, uh, being very, very modest. Uh, in the Greyhound game, who is your favourite dog? Do you have a favourite dog, you know, racing now or in years gone by? Not really, um, but I have a bit of a soft spot for... Uh, uh, the d number five dog in each race because it's in <laughs> yellow and black and it, it wears the number five, which is my number. So uh, I always, I always have a uh, have a lucky spot or a soft spot for that. And Lucky's dog <laughs> wore number five when it won the Melbourne Cup. So the, I was excited and dancing on the inside for, for Lucky. Well, I think it was a good year for all Richmond people. Won the AFL Premiership and won the Grand Final of Greyhound Racing. I think you could say with the the Melbourne Cup. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Emmett, and uh, good luck with everything moving forward with GRV. Thank you very much, and thanks for your show. I must. Enjoy it. Good luck to you guys. Thanks, too. Mate.